Hello everyone. Good morning. Greetings. Uh, my name is Mind Mover Mario. I'm one of the science communicators at the Mind Museum. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to another installment of Mind at Home. Because we want to slow down the spread of COVID-19 and flatten the curve, many of us have to stay home as much as possible. This means we cannot go to museums or schools yet. And in many places of the country, um, the stay at home orders have already eased up. But remember that the virus is still out there. It's still spreading. So we should still limit going outside only when it is absolutely necessary. Remember to wear your mask properly when you have to go outside. And you have to always regularly wash your hands with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds. Now, how can we have a little bit of fun at home while we are, a lot of us are still staying at home? And is it possible to do this while learning? Well, of course we can. Uh, with Mind at Home, we are going to show some science activities that you can do at home with materials that some of you already have at home. Now for today's Mind at Home, we are going to be playing and talking about proteins. If you guys have watched our previous Mind at Home videos, you know that we've talked a lot about DNA or uh, the nucleic acid and how it's very important. Well, for today's Mind at Home, we'll be talking about another biomolecule that is protein. A biomolecule, again, is a molecule that is important uh, for our bodies to function properly. And at the same time, uh, biomolecules are produced or are synthesized, we call it synthesized by our own bodies. We can make these uh, things, this stuff inside our bodies. Now, what are proteins? Proteins, again, is a bio, uh, proteins are biomolecules of long chains of amino acids. That's uh, the very basic unit of a protein. We call it amino acid. Uh, this is how we differentiate proteins from other biomolecules. If we saw something in the body and we looked at it and we saw it's made of amino acids, we can say that it, it is a protein. Now, what are the other amino acids? We've talked about DNA, now we're, we'll be talking about protein, but there are actually four uh, biomolecules that you can find in our bodies, in animals, in plants, in all living things. First, uh, the first biomolecule is a very important one as well, is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates or carbs, I know a lot of us are familiar with carbohydrates. And to differentiate carbohydrates from other biomolecules, uh, carbohydrates are made of sugars. That's the repeating chain of a carbohydrate, sugars. So your starches, your bread, these are carbohydrates because they are made of long chains of sugars. Next are lipids, lipids or fat, right? Those, these are fat. So uh, the repeating chains of lipids, the way we differentiate lipids or fats from other biomolecules is if they're made up of fatty acids. So that's how we differentiate fats. Uh, they're made of fatty acids. And then of course we have DNA or nucleic acid made of nucleotides. And then now we'll be talking about proteins made of amino acids. So these are the four biomolecules of uh, living things. Proteins have many functions in our bodies. They do a lot of work. In fact, they actually have the most functions. Sila yung may pinakamaraming ginagawa sa katawan natin. And from the tips of our hair to the very end of our toes, of our uh, nails in our toes, it's actually all protein. So inside of us, outside, maraming maraming protein. Now, what are some examples of proteins? What are uh, some pro uh, what are the functions of these proteins? Well, the first one is structural proteins. So structure. These, these proteins, they give structure to our organs, to our body. And uh, one of those structural proteins is keratin. I know many of us are also familiar with Keratin, we hear it a lot in commercials, in products. Keratin is actually a type of protein 
that makes up our hair. Hair is mostly keratin. Our nails are also uh, made of keratin. And the very surface of our skin uh, also has keratin. Another uh, structural protein is collagen. Another very famous uh, name, right? Collagen, hear it a lot as well. Uh, collagen is actually the most abundant protein in the body. It's 25% of all the proteins. Now, again, we're made up of a lot of different kinds of proteins. And 25% or one-fourth of all those proteins are actually collagen. And collagen is very abundant and very important because it is the main structural protein, meaning all, uh, all the organs in the body, all the blood vessels, yung mga ugat natin, yung muscles natin, even our bones, our skin, all has collagen. So collagen, collagen yung parang scaffolding that holds everything in place. Now, another function of proteins uh, uh, is that they help in digestion of food. So yung pagtunaw ng pagkain in our digestive system, um, may mga protein then that, that are very important for that to happen. And we call these proteins enzymes. Enzymes, what they do is they speed up, pinapabilis nila yung digestion process para magamit agad natin yung nutrients that uh, are stored in the food that we eat. So those are enzymes. And some hormones of the body are also made of proteins. Hormones are, if you're not familiar with hormones, hormones are the messengers of the body. Most of the time, they are secreted from the brain. So they come from the brain and then they travel to a specific organ to send a certain message to that organ. So some of these hormones are actually made of protein as well. And an example of that is insulin. Insulin is a very important a hormone that actually regulates uh, blood sugar or yung uh, sugar na dumadaloy sa dugo natin, nire-regulate yun ng insulin. So pag masyado ng marami, uh, dyan na yung insulin, you're going to get that sugar and you're going to store it. Itatago nila yon in the liver. And then proteins are also very important in the immune system. So later on, I'll be showing you some of uh, the proteins that I'm talking about to show you how they look like. But for now, proteins are also very important uh, because they're also part of the immune system. Now, I know you've been hearing a lot about antibodies or antibodies. These are Y-shaped proteins, letter Y. They are Y-shaped proteins that help neutralize viruses and other germs, like bacteria and uh, viruses. So uh, pro uh, antibodies are actually made of proteins as well, and they're part of the immune system. And there are also proteins that we call transport proteins. So what they do is they transport. So nagbibitbit sila, uh, they travel all along the body and binibitbit nila yung mga important nutrients uh, from one place to another. And one example of that is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that is found in our red blood cells. And what hemoglobins do is they hold on to oxygen. So when you breathe in oxygen, hemoglobin from the blood will take that oxygen and then it will transport it to the organs, to the different organs of the body. Because again, all our body organs need oxygen to survive. Now, uh, again, proteins are made of repeating chains of amino acids. These are the basic unit of a protein, amino acids. And amino acids, when they're in a the long chain like that, so different amino acids make up a chain, they actually fold, they fold uh, together because of uh, interactions between these amino acids. So they fold and they uh, curve and they uh, uh, move together, they like stick together, and that makes a certain shape, a very specific shape for a specific protein. So all proteins, different kinds of proteins have different kinds or different shapes and sizes. And this shape, this uh, shape that is produced when amino acids interact is actually very important to the function of the protein or what that protein do. So a very specific shape is very important for proteins to function. Now, uh, before we start our actual experiment for this morning, I'm going to show you, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you some of really interesting proteins that we have in our bodies. Well, one that we don't have, but let me share my screen and let me show you 
these proteins. So this is the first one. We've mentioned it earlier. It's collagen. So it has a triple helix structure. So if you've uh, watched our Fast Mind at Home videos about uh, DNA. So DNA has a double helix structure. So dalawang spiral intertwining together. Now, collagen is not made of DNA. It's made of amino acid chains again. But of course, it's a triple helix structure naman. You have three uh, chains of protein and they all uh, uh, they all combine and they all wrap around one another. So similar, this particular picture where you have a pink uh, chain of amino acids, you have a green and an orange chain. So, but of course, in reality, uh, hindi naman ganyan talaga yung color of our amino acid chains, but for the sake of this picture, uh, nilagyan natin ng kulay. So ganyan sila, triple helix. So here in the photo on the left, you can see the individual amino acids. So there are three kinds of amino acids that makes up collagen. So you have the pink, the white, and the lavender one. So for the sake of our video, we're no longer going to name these amino acids because there are a lot of amino acids. So, and I know you guys won't be able to remember it. I'm, I don't memorize it anymore. So uh, just, it's enough to remember that there are three chains of uh, amino acids that makes up collagen. Again, the most abundant protein, and it's also made up of three, uh, ami uh, three different amino acids. For our next protein, we have, this is what an antibody looks like. Again, it's Y-shaped, right? So para siyang letter Y, you have two arms, left and right arms, that, looks like, that look like the end of a golf club. So para siyang ganun, and then you have the body, the main body of your antibody. So what it does is, if you can see the yellow portion of our antibody, that yellow portion is actually the one that attaches onto a virus or a foreign, uh, foreign body inside that gets inside our body, in our lungs, in our blood. Pumapasok sila and then they attach like that. Yung dalawang yellow arms, they attach and that's how they neutralize the virus. So each of those colors are actually different chains of uh, amino acids. So the yellow one is a one long chain that is folded and uh, folded and intertwined, linked with each other, and then attached to the other parts of your antibody. So the, this red one is another uh, certain amino acid chain that has been folded up, and then the orange one is a different one as well. Now, if we go to the next one, so this is a very pretty picture of another protein. This is called a protease, uh, and it's from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that is causing COVID-19. It's a protease, so what it does is it cuts up proteins. So, di ba para siyang heart? It's like a symbol of a heart. It's very nice. And what it does is it's, oh, sorry, it's inside of the virus. And again, what a virus does is it hijacks our cells so that we produce or we make the new proteins of the virus uh, for it, right? So we will be making the new virus for it. So kapag ginagawa na ng body natin or ng cells natin, yung viral, viral proteins or yung proteins na kailangan ng virus, what this protease do is it cuts it into specific lengths. So pinuputol niya yung mga proteins na produce para magiging bagong virus yung mga yon. So that's what a protease uh, do. So one of the treatments that they are looking at, that scientists are looking at for treatment for COVID-19 is to actually how to stop protease from doing that, from cutting up new uh, viral proteins and then shaping it into a new virus. So as you can see as well, there are two units of this protease protein. Meron tayo the red one and the orange one. So they are uh, uh, individual chains that are folded up into that shape, tapos magdidikit sila, and then they look like a symbol of a heart. So the actual cutting of the protein actually happens in this yellow, on this blue part. 
yung blue part that you can see, that is where it cuts the viral, the new viral protein produced by our cells. And then lastly, we have this. It's of albumin, of albumin or ova, meaning egg, and albumin is the kind of protein. And you can find this in chicken eggs. So the egg white of a chicken egg actually contains a lot of, of albumin. And uh, we say that it is globular in shape, meaning it's almost spherical, mataba siya, no? globule. It's globular in shape versus uh, kung makikita nyo yung, uh, kung, if you remember the photo of the collagen, it's fibrous, fiber, mahaba siya, para siyang sinulid. But ovalbumin is globular, bilog-bilog sila. Now, why is uh, ovalbumin uh, important? Because it will be uh, the source of our protein for our experiment this uh, morning. So let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah. So uh, uh, egg whites or ovalbumin is very important because that will serve as the source of our proteins. Sabi natin, we will be playing with protein for this morning. So I got myself an, a chicken egg. Isang piraso lang, one chicken egg. I took out the yolk and then I poured the egg whites into separate cups. All right. Ano, balik tad yung, uh, yung aking labels. I'm so sorry. But let me show you one by one. So that is the chicken egg. Uh, chicken egg white, I mean. That is the egg white that are po I poured into four different cups. All right. So this is just one egg, isang pirasong itlog lang po ito that I used. So balik tayo, I'm sorry, but I'm going to read each of the label, all right? So this one will be our, it says control. This will be our control. So in every experiment that you do, uh, it's important that you have a control group or a group where you compare all the others. So what we're going to do here for this one is we're not going to add anything. So, oh, I think Tamasha on, oh, okay, you can read it properly on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Zoom right now, so in Zoom kasi baliktad siya, all right? Thank you for that. Uh, this will be the control. Again, our control group will be that uh, group where we are going to, uh, that will stay the same. Wala tayong idadagdag dito. So uh, it's very important that in every experiment, you have a control group. So you can compare everything else to this one. So this is just pure, uh, pure egg white or pure ovalbumin. Our next one is uh, tap water. It's labeled tap water, but right now there's just egg white in it, in the cup. So tap water, we're just going to add regular tap water. Lukewarm, so hindi mainit, hindi malamig, uh, just at room temperature water. So that's our tap water. Lalagyan natin yung tap water dyan. Uh, for this one, again, this is just egg white. We're going to add hot water here. And for this one, we're going to add alcohol. So why are we going to add all of these uh, these materials or these liquids in our egg white. That's because we want to see, again, as I've mentioned, a protein has a very specific shape. And this shape is very important to the function of the protein. So kung wala yung uh, shape na yon ng protein, if it's not folded the right way, it will not function properly. Now, uh, for proteins to stay in shape, for, for example, our albumin in our uh, egg white, for it to stay in shape, uh, there are specific conditions that it needs uh, to keep that shape. So for the proteins in our body, it's very important to maintain our body temperature, right? So our body temperature, normal temperature is around 36, 37 degrees Celsius. So it's important to, uh, to uh, stay that way because uh, uh, some of these proteins can actually lose their shape if we go above that temperature. Now, uh, there are others, uh, certain specific conditions that proteins need to stay in shape. And uh, some of that is we need to maintain a specific level of salt. So uh, certain levels of salt in the body is actually also very important 
to uh, maintain some of the protein's shape. So not too high, not too much salt level. And also water. Water level is very important for some of the proteins to stay in shape. Uh, that's why we, we have to stay hydrated every day. So actually our egg white is uh, a mix of water and the actual protein, the ovalbumin protein. And the water content of this egg white is right. It's just enough for the protein to stay in its proper shape. So now what do we call this? Uh, unfolding of the protein. When a protein unfolds or when it loses its, its shape, we call that denaturation or, or just the word nature and then you add de or de at the start, we call it denature or denaturation. That's when proteins loses their shape. So we're going to see if by adding tap water, hot water, and oops, and alcohol, just a regular rubbing alcohol, we're going to try and see if this can cause uh, proteins of the egg white to actually lose their shape and denature. So again, the control will stay the same so we can compare everything else. So I have here the ingredients. I have tap water, just regular tap water. Then inside this cup is hot water and then your regular rubbing alcohol. This is just regular 70% rubbing alcohol. So again, the control will stay the same so we can compare the others. So I want you to observe carefully what will happen upon adding our different uh, liquids. So, okay, now let's try to add top, top water. Let's see if it has any effect on the uh, ovalbumin protein of our egg white. So I'm pouring my regular tap water. So, parang well, nothing's happening. So maybe if we leave it a couple seconds, let's see. Just leave it there for a few seconds and then we're going to do the others. Now I have here hot water. Let's see what will happen to our uh, egg white protein if it will denature upon adding the hot, hot water. So I need to be careful because it's really hot. It's fresh of the boil. And almost instantly, you can see the protein changed, right? Something happened to the protein. So is that denaturation? We'll see later. So let me just put away my hot water. And the next one is alcohol. Again, this is regular rubbing alcohol. I'm going to pour it into our cup labeled alcohol. Let's see what will happen. And also almost instantly, you can see a change in the egg white, a change in the protein. So if you want to compare it, if you want to compare it, this is our control group. Again, control groups are used to compare all the other trials or uh, experiments to this one. So this is just regular egg white. Now let's compare it with tap water. So uh, actually there is some denaturation as you can see. Parang namumuo na yung egg white here at the bottom. And that's because uh, our uh, water, kahit na tap water lang siya, hindi siya mainit, hindi siya malamig, it's still hot enough to denature. Although it takes more time, right? Uh, not like our hot water here, where instantly upon adding the hot water, we can uh, already see denaturation of the protein. Yung ating tap, tap water uh, trial, medyo hindi pa buo. 
meron lang kakoonte. And that's because it's not actually the water that is important in the experiment, but the heat of that water. So similar to our uh, the conditions in our bodies, diba? as we mentioned earlier, we need to maintain a certain body temperature. That's because uh, a little too hot, if you go above 37, 36 degrees Celsius, you can already denature protein. So this is boiling water. So our egg white has completely denatured versus this one na hindi masyado. And also in our alcohol uh, alcohol trial, the egg white has also denatured. So puti na siya. So it looks familiar, right? Denatured protein uh, in egg whites is actually very familiar. It just looks like uh, what happens when we cook our egg. So every time you cook your egg, you're actually doing a little bit of an experiment yourself. You're denaturing the egg white uh, protein. You're denaturing the ovalbumin. So it doesn't matter if you fry the egg uh, or if you boil it, as long as you put heat in it, you uh, actually cause the proteins to denature. So what happens is uh, the protein unfolds. So from a very small folded pro pro protein, it unfolds into a very long one, and then it also precipitates out of our uh, mixture. So because originally it's dissolved in water, uh, but upon denaturation, it actually comes out of being dissolved. And now you can uh, see the protein very well, as well as here in our uh, alcohol trial or alcohol cup. This is this one, hindi masyado, because the heat is not uh, much. So, hindi siya ganong kainit to uh, denature our protein. And then, again, for comparison, this is our uh, control group. All right. So that's our experiment for this um, morning, uh, denaturing proteins, how we can play around with proteins at home. So uh, uh, again, uh, I use egg white because it's the most accessible and the easiest to get. And so that's alcohol with the egg white, the denatured egg white. Again, what happens is the protein loses its shape. It unfolds. Now, what are the consequences when uh, protein unfolds? Well, it loses its function. So uh, an antibody won't be able to neutralize proteins as well as it can, as, uh, it can if it's not denatured uh, because it's, it doesn't have that appropriate shape to attach to the virus. Uh, collagen, If imagine if the triple helix structure of the collagen, if it loses its shape, if it loses that structure, it won't be able to hold uh, the, the shape of our organs as well. Uh, that's actually what happens as we age. We cannot produce uh, as much collagen as we can when we're still young. And that's actually why uh, when we, as we age, the skin of our face, of uh, well, our skin, uh, generally it sags or it, it sort of falls down. It's because uh, collagen, we're losing collagen because we're not producing as much collagen as we age. And also, it's easier to break, it's easier to denature the collagen as we age. Uh, so that's what happens, right? It loses its function. And imagine we have... Uh, a lot, a whole lot of proteins, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of proteins in the bodies, in our body that uh, do different functions. So imagine if uh, we lose a small portion of those from denaturation. And actually, there are also some proteins that when they lose the shape or when they unfold or when, or when they unfold or when the, a certain fold happens that, the, that is usually not the right form or the, the right shape can actually cause disease. So we call those prions. 
So if you if you're familiar with mad cow disease, so this is uh, the prion or the misshaped or the wrongly shaped protein from a cow that uh, causes uh, disease in cows and can actually also cause disease in us if we eat the protein, uh, the prion protein uh, from the the meat of the cow can actually also cause disease in humans. So it's very important to keep your proteins safe, keep them in the proper condition, right? To protect yourself from the virus because the virus that is causing this pandemic can make you uh, have fever, it can make you sick. Uh, and at the same time, uh, drink lots of water and then eat also eat uh, protein rich food. So it's not only meat uh, that is rich in proteins, but uh, there are a lot of vegetables actually that are also rich in proteins. It's very uh, important that we also uh, eat protein-rich vegetables because it's actually safer for the environment if we get our proteins from these vegetables. All right, so now let's go to your questions. Try to answer your questions. So a question from Nat. Uh, Nat is asking, will animal antibodies work when transferred to humans? Also the other way around. Well, uh, some antibodies can, from animals can actually work uh, for humans, but it's, a ve it's very specific to the disease that it can neutralize. So if you're familiar with rabies, um, we have human antibodies for rabies that we inject if we get uh, bitten by, if we get bit by a, by a, uh, by a, a rabid uh, animal. So we get injected with uh, human antibodies or sometimes, uh, uh, actually sometimes we get injected with horse antibodies for rabi rabies. We call that equine uh, antibodies or equine uh, shot for an anti for anti rabies a shot so but that's very specific to rabies only so i'm not sure if there are other antibodies from animals that can neutralize other uh, disease uh, but that's one thing i know is that it's very specific to the type of disease so like this one the particular equine antibodies only for rabies All right, so let's see if there are any more questions. Another question, what is the yellow part though in the alcohol cup? So in the alcohol, now there's this yellow part. So I think that's just the egg white that the alcohol hasn't reached because it's covered or it's blocked by the, uh, by the denatured protein on top. So let's see if I can get into those proteins. Oops, so ayaw na. I think uh, the protein stuck on the side of the cup here. Kaya it, uh, it can no longer reach, the alcohol can no longer reach the egg white that is stuck there. Uh, let's see if there are any more questions. There's a question asking if we can re restore denatured protein to its original form? Well, it depends on how uh, the protein was denatured. And uh, specifically for heat, if we add, especially this one, this is boiling hot water, uh, we can no longer reverse uh, this uh, denatured protein. But if, siguro if the heat is not that much, or uh, if, the denaturing, uh, if the denaturing substance uh, like alcohol here uh, is a weak one, we can maybe still restore, it will revert, uh, the, uh, the protein can revert to its original form if you take out the substance that is denaturing it, right? So I think in, the, uh, in pasturing milk, in pasteurization of milk, when we pasteurize milk, what we do is we heat it just enough to kill uh, bacteria and viruses that can that might be in the milk, but not actually curdle the milk. So meaning we heat it 
but the proteins in uh, the milk stays uh, the, or in their original form. So it stays the same. Because if we heat it too much, curdle yung milk, that's because na denature na yung protein and we can no longer reverse that. But if we just heat it ng konti, uh, in the process of pasteurization, you can actually still revert that. Because if you remove the heat, uh, some of the proteins can still fold back to the original shape. That's because we retain the original amino acid chain. And if we retain the original amino acid chain, uh, the interactions that it has originally can still uh, go back or, or, or it can still form again. So if you have more questions, please do so. Uh, put it in the comment section and I will be reading out and try to answer some of your questions. So, but uh, basically that's it. That's how we play with proteins at home. That's how we cook protein. So that's how we denature protein. We can denature protein by cooking it. It's a very interesting experiment. And if you ever try this at home, maybe you have other stuff at home that you can add and see if it can denature the protein. Just be safe, please. So if you have any strong acids or base there, maybe don't use that or be extra careful when you do that um, so that you don't hurt yourself. So uh, because proteins also can be denatured using uh, acids and bases, right? So I tried, when I was trying out this experiment, I tried using vinegar, but I think vinegar is too weak of an acid to actually denature the protein or maybe uh, the, some of the proteins are denaturing, but I just can't see it with my eyes because konti lang yung nagdenature. Because again, it's a weak acid. So you can try, and then you can comment your trials at home, your own experiments at home. Just be extra careful, please, when you do it, especially if you do it with hot water because you might hurt yourself. Well, alcohol is pretty safe naman, but uh, just make sure that you don't get it in your eyes, you don't get it, uh, you don't ingest it. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed our science activity, our science experiment this morning. Let me see one more time if there are more questions. All right, wala na. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, just a reminder to please stay at home again as much as possible. Still stay at home even if uh, some of the measures or lockdown measures have already relaxed in many places uh, because the virus is still out there and we need to still help stop the spread of the virus. Always wash your hands regularly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And while you are staying at home, please follow the Mind Museum on our social media channels, uh, on Facebook and Instagram, even Twitter, for more Mind at Home videos and uh, other uh, materials that we are going to release. And if you try some of our experiments, if you try this particular experiment, please feel free to tag us to show us your work because we will be very glad to see uh, what you've done. Again, uh, this has been Mind Mover Mario. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe at home, everyone. Bye-bye.